but welcome right now Merit Bear, who is Principal Security Architect of AWS, and she will be joined by David Laybourne, who is Head of Global Transformation at Randstad. Um, Merit, David, welcome. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks for having me today. As uh, Rick mentioned, I'm a principal security architect at AWS. I work on um, strategic security initiatives in um, youngest technologies and across the business. So I've worked with some of our largest customers, Fortune 100s across the board um, and around the globe. And uh, we'll be talking today with uh, David Laybourne, as Rick mentioned, who's uh, a customer. And so we'll hear a bit more of their specific story. Uh, David, could you uh, give an introduction on, you know, a little bit about the journey that Ransat has been on and um, the role that you played in, in getting them to cloud? Yeah, sure, hi. Um, so my name is David Laybourne and I work for Ransat and Ransat are a global recruitment and HR um, organization that connects clients with talent to uh, try and foster a lifetime of uh, employability. And our goal at the moment is to, our, our key strategy is to touch the lives of 500 million people by the year 2030. So to do that, we are very lucky that we have a digital strategy. And uh, that means that we can uh, use data-driven insights with our human relationships to um, become that trusted partner of choice. And of course, the first journey was to, to go into AWS and, and move all of our infrastructure into the cloud so that we could uh, make those performance changes so we could deliver the business, uh, the, uh, the tech and touch strategy as we call it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I think that um, you, what you're saying is a common thread that I hear with customers, which is that, uh, you know, the generativity side of the business uh, was a big driver of the move to cloud, just the ability to do more in the business segment that you're in. So to be in the business of, in your case, you know, staffing and HR, um, it could be in healthcare or uh, automotive or, you know, whatever the core business is, you know, the kind of uh, base value proposition of cloud is that it allows uh, the cloud provider to maintain those bottom layers of the stack. So the concrete floor up through layer four, the hypervisor, um, and the customer uh, then uh, maintains those uh, application layers of the stack. So layer four through seven. We refer to this as the shared responsibility model. Um, it is not that AWS shirks responsibility for security, um, but rather that customers are the only ones who know what they're doing. And so, you know, the ability to customize and to kind of think through security as a holistic approach and, and to architect for security rather than thinking in a perimeter mentality where you bolt it on after, um, you know, is a new uh, dimension of sort of the realities of security now if you are in the cloud. Um, can you talk a little more about sort of what the benefit was when you moved and um, what the timing was around the transition? You know, when will you be fully in the cloud? Yeah, sure. So uh, we decided that cloud was, uh, was a good choice for us um, so we could get speed and scale. We could use platform services so we didn't have to rewrite the rules and reinvent the wheel and so forth. So um, we, we thought that moving into a cloud environment would allow us to um, really take those business drivers and develop the business forward. So we can now deploy quickly, we can keep things simple and manageable, we can scale, we can start small, scale up and those sort of things. And it's really trying to keep up with the innovation that certainly AWS does on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, now, we, we started our journey to the cloud many, many years ago, but in earnest, in 2016, we started a global project to um, take all of the data centers from Randstad globally and move them into AWS. And that was a mammoth task, um, but still keeping the wheels on the bus rolling because we still had all of those data centers up and running. So there was an area where we needed to look at securing the cloud and also keeping uh, the, secure the, the data centers. Got it. So, um, so where are you now in that journey? Uh, we're done. We uh, we moved all of our environments into uh, AWS and also GCP. Um, so we finished our journey last year, and uh, we're now maturing our environments because there's always new things coming on board. 
Definitely. Um, I mean, that's an interesting anecdote because I often uh, have conversations with customers where they say, well, we can't move these workloads. Um, and I say, why, right? Because often it is um, a security consideration that drives them to say, well, no, we still need to keep some things on-prem. So it sounds like you are an attestation that, that you have pushed past those blockers as well. Yeah, to me, I think it's more, more of a mindset. So you need to get away from the physical servers. You need to look at your application and your data and how can you make it work? How can you use what you need to use and not what you don't need to use? So we, we, we are a great example of it. We've moved a thousand applications, thousands of servers and compute. Um, and we've done the basics first, getting the central services, all of the um, the infrastructure that manages and supports everything else, that's all moved over, all of our scene processes and our governance scripts. And then you start the process of, of transformation where you look at every single application you have, where it connects to. Um, you look at all your security groups, your load balances, how do you redesign it to work in the cloud? Because if you just lift and shift everything, you're not gonna get the benefit you're just going to end up with another data center so you need to you need to reevaluate the methodology that you use and how your data is transported and then you can design that and build that and ideally you do that with a, with a, with a pipeline so that there's no um, user intervention you can you can scale it you can replicate it over and over again your disaster recovery becomes easy because you can just reinstall it in another availability zone in a bubble. You can do all these tests. Everything that was really, really hard in the original physical data centers, trying to get compute to run these tests, is just so different in, in AWS. That's, yeah, a great encapsulation of some of the uh, conversations that I have had with customers and and it sounds like your approach is really holistic and um you know uh your characterization is on point i think there is sort of snark on twitter every now and then about how the cloud is just someone else's data center but if that's how you're treating it which is fine i mean you can do that but if that's how you're treating it then you're missing out on some of that higher level functionality like you point out so i think um you know there are the ways in which cloud can allow you to do some of the basic blocking and tackling that you always had to do in security you know just doing the uh, protective detective reactive controls for example but then there are other higher order ways that you can think about this so thinking through how you automate um how you embed security into your devops and make it devsecops how you can take advantage of things like you know formal methods that we use to validate our crypto is correct um we have a team at AWS called the Automated Reasoning Group. That's a bunch of math PhDs that does this stuff. Really interesting. Um, you know, now that infrastructure is code, security is code, and you can embed policies as logical formulas. You know, the, the fully API-driven nature allows you to have continuous compliance as well. There's just so many elements that I think your, your approach and mentality captures where it's like, you know, kind of grow up as a, not as a uh, chiding, but as an encouragement uh, that the, the org gets to grow up. Um, exactly, it's, so I guess, it's a level of maturity. Yeah, yes, exactly. Um, I think the, uh, the uh, one of the main concerns or considerations is the ability to have that visibility and deployment, um, you know, uh, consolidated and in, uh, much shorter time periods. Was that your experience as well? Absolutely. So while we were transforming, we had two environments, or actually we had 38 data centers and AWS to consider. So, and that was very hard to keep uh, a view on exactly what was going on in the environment. But now we, we set up our, our central services and our guidelines and principles within AWS, we can um, have a single view over all of the uh, functionality and everything that's going on in, in our cloud provider. So we look at the, the logs from uh, cloud, we augment those with uh, logs from uh, our agents that we have on our compute or within the past services. And then we have one holistic view that we can understand what's actually going on between A and B. And then you just need a really specialized SOC team that can look at that data and understand it and, and then work on it. 
Right. Yeah, exactly. It, ultimately, it becomes how do you actionize those or, um, you know, turn them into the right uh, automations that you can minimize that gray area for human decision making and really unleash your security team to go chase down novel problems or really high stakes ones instead of the old kind of manual uh, realities on the ground. Um, well, I think Absolutely. we're hitting our time here. Uh, we've got, I guess, one question, uh, one or two questions from the audience. Yeah, I think uh, we have time to take a couple questions, right, Rick? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's have a dig through. Um, Leah, you go first. Dig one out. Okay, well, I thought this one was perfect, especially uh, David was talking about that massive transformation that he's gone through with the data center and moving things to the cloud. So, David, I, I, this might be coming from a CISO, I'm not sure. It says, how do you manage compliance across data center and cloud? So, we're pretty fortunate now because we're cloud and cloud. Um, but at the end of the day, is for me, it's uh, it's a matter of consolidating all of that information into a single pane, and then looking at auto resolving those issues and the really really hard ones. Then that's when the SOC team have a look and figure out what's going on. But if you can, in my view, pipeline things and you can have toll gates and you make sure that your pipeline is secure with code testing and, as I say, toll gates, then. I think you're in a pretty good position to move forward, but we can all do better. Yeah, it sounds like you're in a good spot now because you've gone through that transition. So now your compliance reporting mm -hmm. is all cloud. You've got that single pane of glass and that single pane of reporting, which is nice. Excellent. Yeah. I, uh, if we've got time, I'm looking through the questions. There's some lots and lots of really good questions actually, but uh, oh, here's a good one. Here's a good one for, for you, Merit. Um, coming from the other end of the scale, coming from uh, someone who is, if you have an organization which is going all in on cloud, where do they start? So we're right at the beginning of the journey. What happens? Uh, so I think that uh, most customers, if they were to start today, uh, would want to take advantage of managed services. Um, so AWS organizations, for example, will help you to um, get uh, sort of a default set up for the ways that you vend accounts and um, are able to do allow and block lists for services and other kind of mandates at a policy level. Um, you can take advantage of things like landing zones and control tower. These are managed services that basically kind of blur that shared responsibility line and embed some um, opinions about your architectural decision making that are in line with best practices. So I think taking advantage of, of managed services, um, having a uh, kind of an unsexy uh, attention to things like tagging so that you have awareness of your assets and you can then deploy uh, changes. A, 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 an existing tagging regime is better than none um, and those can be updated. So like doing some of the kind of um, process driven uh, visibility and awareness uh, working. I would also put high on the list going to get executive sponsorship for your security right. uh, priorities so that you do not um, wait until there is a crisis and so that you also get buy-in for the whole life cycle of the security machine here so that your executives know they need to pick up the phone for security. 100% of executives will say they care. That is just not where the conversation you know, needs to end. It needs to be... Um, turning that into actionable items. So for us, for example, um, we do not resolve a trouble ticket until we've scripted a remediation. So creating a culture of automation, but that is enforced by policies that everyone up through your executive structure um, can buy into. I think ultimately we could talk about blocking and tackling at the architectural layers, but a lot of this will also be in the form of cultural transformations culture process buy-in people all of those those great things like you say really fundamental at the beginning to make sure that you have everyone on board before you set sail right i guess that's that's kind of the message yeah i mean hey you don't have to have everyone on board you can be the lighthouse as far as i'm concerned you know like often there is a, a person or a group in an organization that really does a lot of the evangelizing here and they help shepherd them into the next 
you know, iteration. And I think that is typical. Um, so if you are that person carrying the water, like, we get it, we see you. Um, but I also think that, um, you know, being, uh, taking advantage of not just technical tools, but technical tools that speak to each other, that have awareness of your kind of uh, decision-making. So things like policies around access controls, those are not a technical capability in itself. I mean, those are things that your business needs to make some judgment calls around, and then you can enforce them. But to have the will to enforce them, um, you need to have that buy-in. And I think the um, articulation of that in a really tactical, um, real way on the ground is something that your technology folks can help you with but ultimately that kind of um, ability to translate your security issues into bottom line business considerations is where you'll you know get the most value here and and it, honestly it's where your um you know your value from moving to the cloud comes in anyway like i mentioned you know treating this like someone else's data center isn't actually the most value you will get. You should, you know, use this as an opportunity to mature your business and to move your security team into this kind of next level of thinking. That's fantastic. It's, it's horrible to think that we're running out of time, but we we are, uh, so we do have to move on. We could speak for hours. I'm sure I speak for pretty much everyone in attendance. Thank you both very much for joining us. Um, it's been incredibly interesting. And I'm sure we're going to get a whole bunch of questions to, to resolve and forward on uh, to you after the event. But again, thank you so much for joining us. It's been amazing.